Good Monday evening to everybody. Welcome to another episode of This Brother Talks. Uh, I'm Tony Crawford. I just want to um, uh, come to you this week on a bunch of sports topics. I come every Monday, uh, 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern Time, um, just to entertain some of you and some of you entertain me at the same time. Got a host of things to talk about from uh, Monday Night Football. Just give my prediction on that. WNBA Finals. Um, you know, the John Gruden fallout, you know, so on and so forth. And plus, the NBA is back. My favorite, favorite sport in basketball is back. But this is a great time for sports right now because you have a, a bunch of good sports going on. If you are the real sports head, you would like football, baseball, because we get into you know the, the, the World Series for baseball, then you got basketball starting, you got football on on Thursday, Monday, and Sundays. And, you know, if if the WNBA Finals would have kept going, then, you know, we could have had the WNBA still going on. So it was just a great time for sports. But we'll jump right into things, and we'll start with Monday Night Football. We got the Bills and the Titans. Um, The Bills versus the Titans. Uh, Titans have really not been all that impressive to me this year uh, as as they were last year. Uh, I think the Bills – are a much better team, and I think they're they're built for this. I think the Bills are going to road and take care of the Titans uh, by at least two touchdowns, uh, especially if they play the way they played against uh, Patrick Mahomes and the um, and the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, uh, the big thing is um, the Bills' defense. You know how can they stop Derrick Henry and all that good stuff, which I think they won't have an issue doing that. And, you know, it's just limit him. Um, <laughs> my brother-in-law Ron says, "Bro, my bedtime is eight. I want to watch, but you need to come on earlier." On the... <laughs> I think about that, Ron. Uh, you can always go back and watch it the next day because it is still on there. So just go back and watch it the next day. I appreciate you at least checking in, Mister Eight O'clock. I forgot that's what old folks do—they go to bed at seven thirty, eight o'clock. All right, but you know the Bills and the Titans. I I think the Bills. You know if they limit Derrick Henry, then everything else will fall in place because Derrick Henry is a nightmare for any defense uh, that he goes up against. All right. So that's it for Monday Night Football. But let's talk about the WNBA Finals. And I told people from the start, um, at the beginning, when I, you know, first I was really on, like, uh, supporting our female athletes and supporting sports and supporting the basketball because – and supporting the WNBA because everybody was talking about how they weren't getting paid as much as men. And, you know, and that's true, but, you know, you get paid based off your revenues and the revenues that you bring in. And the men bring in a whole lot more revenues than the women. And the only way that is is because we buy their jerseys and shirts and go to all their games and, you know, all that type of stuff, you know, merchandise and stuff like that. If we do that for the women, it would be much better for them. But if you missed the WNBA Finals, you missed the treat. I said it uh, about a week ago that uh, right before it started that it would be hard to beat the Chicago Sky. I said it would be very hard to beat them. Um, <laughs> yeah, Chris, she, she was going for the other team, wasn't she? But, you know, and, you know, everybody – you know, you know, thought that, you know, Brittany Griner and um, Diana Taurasi, and they would just be too much. And Skylar Dillon Smith would be too much for any team. And, yeah, on paper they are. But one thing I will say, <laughs> the Sky win their first title. And a lot of people are saying Candace Parker in the Sky. And it's because Candace Parker is a veteran and, you know, and all that good stuff. Like, she had a big part and then winning her veteran leadership and all of this stuff, but she wasn't the best player on that team. Khalil Copper was the best player. And the thing about, the, and this is the thing that I like about a lot of women athletes, especially in basketball when it comes to team sports, their ego is not so big that, you know, they don't, they don't, they don't mind taking a lesser role. And that's what Candace Parker did. In this right here, let me show my veteran leadership, but I'm gonna let 
I'm gonna let these other ones shine because right now it's their time. If 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 everything has to go through me, I'll just feed off of them. If everything goes to me, we're not gonna be very successful because I'm not the Candace Parker of you know five, six, seven years ago. And she understands that still a, 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 a good basketball player, great basketball player. Don't get me wrong about Candace Parker. She's a natural born winner. You know, that's 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 all she's done. She went back home and she delivered a champion, helped deliver a championship um, to the Chicago sky. And I said it uh, a, a few days ago, about a week or so ago, that anybody they were they were peaking at the right time. And I said that it have, anybody who played against them will have trouble, you know, beating them, you know, and, you know, the, the, the Phoenix Mercury has some injuries, but injuries are part of the game. Um, and that Allie Quigley, she is a tough, tough out to have to guard and keep in front of and do, you know, everything because she was just she she was a catalyst for that. But, you know, um, uh, Kalia Cooper, she she was the, the, the finals MVP. And I'll tell you like this right here. If, if, if you're not entertained by, you know, just, you know, good, the, good, good basketball and then then you know you need to look elsewhere because this right here was just good the games were you know intense you know they were fought out you know you know no everything it, it wasn't nobody taking plays off and all that good stuff and i i just completely enjoyed the wba finals um um actually i enjoyed the playoffs period and you know some friends in a group chat and we we all discussed it all the time like you know you know, sometimes one of us wasn't watching it. We shoot each other a message. Hey, man, y'all missing a good game. Everybody tune in. And it's just it, it was just, you know, a joy to watch uh, these ladies put on uh, a great entertainment and, and, and really go all out for each other and against each other. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to next season because I think next season will be even better um, because, you know, now the Chicago Sky have won their championship. Now they're going to be um, the hunted. So we'll see. Uh, my only issue with the WNBA Finals is this right here. Um, I feel like they should give these ladies a best of seven series, especially in the finals, because, you know, you can win a series 3-1, but I, I feel like a seven-game series would be great for them. And they they can do a seven game series. They 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 if you see the attendance was a lot better, you know that that's more money that they can accumulate. So I think seven game series for them would be great. I think eventually they might get to that. And they, and, and I just it's, it's like this: if, if if they do, that's more good basketball for us. Period. And like me, I, I just love sports. Like I'll sit up and watch it. I don't care if the game come on at eleven o'clock in the in the afternoon. If I'm if I'm available, I'm gonna watch it. And that's that's the way I look at it. And I think you know we we need to pay attention to you know these ladies in the WNBA and all that good stuff. But the WNBA finals is over with. Shout out to the Chicago Sky for winning their first uh, championship in franchise history. Uh, it's just it was just a great thing to watch. I, I feel like either team. Whoever won, we were getting our money's worth. That's what I, um, uh, I, I that's what I do believe. And so we're gonna lead the WNBA Finals, and we're gonna go. I'm gonna revisit something um, that talked about, you know, some time ago, and I'm revisiting pay for college athletes. And um, I said I was all for, you know, college athletes getting their money and this, that, and the third. Because it's a lot of people, um, businesses, um, NCAA schools, they all have benefited from, you know, the college athlete. Um, and so my thing is this right here. If we could have found a better way for them to get their money, it would have been all right with me. But it's a free for all. So. You know, I got this star point guard or quarterback, whichever one, and everybody's coming out them in, 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 in whatever town or city they're in, and they're signing these guys to these contracts. They sign these guys to these contracts, and, and they're making real good money. 
and this is where I feel. I feel the same way about some, you know, professional athletes. When they get paid, they have a tendency to not play as hard. And that separates the superstars from the stars to the role players. Because whenever superstars get their money, they're going to make sure that they keep accumulating money. So they're going to they, they gonna keep going out performing. Some of these guys get paid money and then they slack off. And I think that's what's happening with some of these college players. And I'm, and I'm going to use this for an example because I'm right here in Oklahoma and I've seen something happen. And I, I would like for everybody to listen to this out before, you know, you make any judgments on, 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 on what I say and how I feel about it. So you have an athlete in Spencer Rattler who uh, signed deals with, you know, Raising Canes and, if I'm not mistaken, uh, some car dealerships and stuff around here to give them cars to drive, give them money. You know, he making good money. And I feel like from the start, from that time on, he really hadn't played well. It's almost like, well, I'm the man, you know, this, that, and the third. Okay. Well, that's neither here nor there. Let's say, you know, time goes on. They weren't satisfied with his play. They bench him. He didn't sign these contracts. And now they got a true freshman here in Oklahoma that's balling out. And so now the question is, the big question is now, you know, were they going to start Rattler or Caleb? They started Caleb, and Rattler is on the bench. He's getting all this good money from, from endorsements and all of this good stuff. Boom, now his job is, is, is really in jeopardy now because the way this, this true freshman is playing, it's, it's hard to come back from that. They look like a totally different team now. And so now the question is being asked, should he transfer? And – a lot of people saying he should. But here's my question. And, and this was one of my issues whenever it came to the pay to play is that you got these guys is going to sign contracts. And, yeah, it's easy to get in transfer protocol and stuff now. But at the end of the day, you sign these endorsement deals. How can you just up and transfer and not live up to your endorsement deal? Because if you're here in Oklahoma and you got endorsement deals here, and you transfer to, let's say, uh, Clemson in South Carolina, in Clemson, South Carolina. How can you live up to your end of the deal with these endorsements? And so now I feel like a lot of these places are going to say, well, I signed you to these endorsement deal. You're going to live up to your endorsement deal. You you know, and you don't have another choice. You can't go and transfer protocol because if you don't live up to your deal, we're going to sue you, you know, whatever. Like, you know, anything can happen. And so my thing is a lot of people didn't, they didn't think this out. They was all, oh, well, these players are going to get their money. That's what they need. That's what they're supposed to get. I agree. But it could have been a better way, a better way to put this in place so if something like this happened where i wasn't satisfied with the school i was going to it's an easy way for me to get out of these contracts and get out of these endorsement deals because truthfully and honestly if these companies really want to do it they could really hold these players hostage and then a lot of people are going to say a lot of people are going to say that the companies are wrong. They should let them out. No, because you signed a contract. And that's what's wrong with a lot of us now. We feel like, you know, once we get tired of something, you know, we want to go elsewhere and, you know, move on instead of, you know, gutting it out and being a man, a woman about the whole situation. We just say, oh, we're going to up and leave. We're going to run. And we're going to go the other direction. But now, you know, they put the transfer protocol in place. It's easy for you to transfer and play right away. And boom, now you got endorsement deals. Things don't work out with you at that school that you was at. So now you want to transfer. But you got three or four endorsement deals where they done paid you X amount of dollars and you haven't lived up to that money. So more times than none, what are these athletes going to do with their money? They're just going to blow it. They're going to blow it. So, you know, if you want to get out of it, they say, well, you give us, you know, whatever signing bonus we gave you back. You don't have it. Then what you going to do? 
And see, that's my issue with with this these rules is like everybody wanted a free for all, but didn't want to look at the consequences and everything that was happening. Now, if he signed a one year deal, that's totally different. But let's say, for instance, you're a true freshman. You know that you're going to stay here for three years because you're the starter. You feel like everything is going to be there. You're going to be there at least three years. You sign a two or three year contract to make sure that you got this money. And make sure that you are making money off your likeness and image and all that good stuff. So I just really think they should revisit this and come up with better protocol so companies or players don't get stuck in contracts that they can't get out of if the situation uh, warrants them having to transfer or something like that because sometimes things happen. You might have thought the situation was great for you and then it ended up not being. And in this instance, I don't think that Spencer Rattler is the type of quarterback that fits Oklahoma schemes because he's not real big and running. He's more of a pocket passer, and Oklahoma is not like that. Every quarterback they had has been a running. And so, like, my thing is, what's going to happen whenever Spencer Rattler, if he tries to transfer and these companies don't let him out of his contract, then we have a whole bunch of people saying the company's wrong. No, the company's not wrong because this is what you guys wanted. You wanted the guys just to be able to – you know, get their money and make their money and stuff like that, but not looking at the long haul. All everybody was looking at was the right then, or they can get paid. Yeah, yeah. And and TC, I'm like, y'all want players to get paid, but it's ridiculous because you know, Spencer Rattler for for an example, TC, he he um got his own you know logo and everything, and raising canes helped him get all that stuff. So like, my thing is how. If he decides to leave and go somewhere where he can't be um, be the spokesman for that company anymore, then what is going to happen? And that's what people fail to realize. Yeah, and, and, and see, that's what it is. It turned to a business. Like, you know, the NBA is a business. The NFL is a business. But college sports, like we talked about them, yeah, they, they, they I felt like the NCAA was – some of the biggest pimps in in the world, the biggest pimps in the world. But at the end of the day, we got to have something in place so these players don't get stuck in these ridiculous contracts. I ain't going to say ridiculous because they're getting paid for their likeness and their image, but if they decide to transfer, it got to be, you got to have something. You got, you got to have something where, you know, you can get out of this contract. But a lot of places I'm not going to let you get out of contract if they done paid you good money for it. They're not just going to bite the bullet just because your situation at that school didn't turn out the way you wanted to. They're going to want you to live up to your end of the deal. And so, you know, I, I, I'm just wondering what's going to happen with, with this whole situation. Cause this is just something that I have thought about before. Like what, what's going to happen if one of these guys decides to transfer and not transfer into a market where they can still hold up the end of the deal of that contract. Now it'd be totally different if, you know, Spencer Ratliff decided to transfer to Oklahoma state, he could still live up to that. But if like I said, if he tried to transfer to, you know, Alabama or, you know, Clemson or, you know, USC or something like that, how's he going to live up to, you know, live up to that. So, you know, I, I just think it's something people really need to think about because all the ones who, you know, being, ooh, players getting paid, they need to get their money. They didn't think about the long haul of this. All they thought was the, you know, the the, 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 the right being. They didn't think about the long term. They talked about, they, they thought about short term. And so we'll see what's going to happen with Spencer with this. But, you know, I just feel like this is going to be an issue. And also with how they play. You know, you get some guys, they're getting their money and they're like, you know, the hell with everything else. I'm getting paid. I don't have to work hard. I don't have to play hard. And so I think that's where it's going to it's going to it's going to come to that. I hope not. But we're going to have some to, to test the system and be like, no, I'm getting paid. I don't you're not going to tell me what to do. So then it turns to players not being coachable. And so, you know, we'll we'll we'll, we'll see. I mean, I hope things work out for Spencer Rattler, but. 
you know, this is a situation that he, he got to look at, you know, more than just transfer protocols because you're stuck in contracts and then signed contracts. And, and me personally, I don't think that they signed him to a one-year deal. It's not saying I, I looked it up to see how long the deal was. I just don't feel like they signed him to a one-year deal. I think it was multiple years. I think, you know, any company that's smart, if you can make money off somebody, I think you do more than one year, especially, you know, a quarterback of his magnitude and, you know, the hype that was going in with him last year and OU and all that good stuff. So, I mean, we'll see. And, you know, I, I hope it works out for him. It's just it's just bad. Um, just bad. Players are trying to play for a brand now. You know, you take the team aspect. Yeah, that's the, and that's what it is. They, they trying to build a brand in college. And that's what's most important to them is brand and not, you know, not winning and losing. So, and so that, that's what it all boils down to. And so, yep, we'll move on. We're going to go into the NFL. We'll go to the Gruden fallout. Um, as we know, John Gruden was, you know, let go and resigned as the Raiders coach. And a lot of people have been making a big deal about a couple of things. Um, said that everybody didn't get upset or they didn't make a big deal about things. So you start talking about gays and women and stuff like that. And, you know, didn't make a big deal about the blacks and stuff. And I, you know, I had to tell, you know, a couple of people that they did. They talked about the black stuff from the time they got the emails on that Friday until that following Monday. Um the NFL was aware of everything. It's just the Raiders kind of overlooked it. And they had talked about all that. Then they got on with the women and the gays and, you know, Roger Goodell and all that good stuff. So it was more than just, you know, I, I feel like the fallout was from everything. It started with, you know, the black insults and all that good stuff. And my big issue with this is, is that, you know, they brought out John Gruden's emails, but I feel like everybody else that he was emailing has stuff to do with it. I think they should be held accountable also because, you know, he felt comfortable enough to say this to you guys. And and I don't know if it was just ignorance or, fear, uh, or pure arrogance for him just to continue to do it. And And I said this, you know, on occasions that, you know, he says that he's not a racist or he's not that type of person. And that was seven, eight, nine, ten years ago, however long ago it was. But he was never called out on it. So don't think that he changed his ways. And with Gruden, you know, I feel like he lost the team once that happened. They played better this weekend. But I think that this investigation into the Washington football team you know, open up a Pandora's box. And I feel like they're going to try to hide some stuff because Gruden is not the only one. He's definitely not the only one that, you know, he just so happened. They just happened to find his and he was, he was the first fall guy. And I think that this right here is just the tip of the iceberg whenever it comes to anything, whenever they go and if they, if they honestly release all those, I guess 650,000 emails or however many emails they had, I guarantee they'll find a whole lot of bias and racist comments and sexist comments and all that type of stuff. And so I just feel like Gruden shouldn't be the only one to be held accountable for what, what was, what was brought up. Um, um, I just said 206 bones in his body. Yeah, I agree. And, um, so my thing is, is if, if 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 you go and you look at everything, Gruden just the tip of the iceberg. You gotta go and look at everybody else. I guarantee you'll find all the other stuff that you know other people have said. And like, um, a lot of people um, was upset with some of our, you know, black, you know. ESPN reporters and stuff like that. And to be honest with you, like I, I whenever it happened, I'm I'm a little bit old school. And you know, Carolyn Sue didn't raise no dummy. And you know, it's a lot of stuff that 
I have dealt with racism. So, if, you know, it's a lot of times you can, you know, when you know. And so it doesn't surprise me that, you know, this came out of his mouth or, or, or out typed in his fingers or whatever. And so it doesn't surprise me because it's a lot of them that feel that way. And I said in the NFL a long time ago, it's, it's a good old boys mentality. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, haven't fallen out about John Gruden, but don't want to look at Jerry Jones. Don't want to look at, um, if I'm not mistaken, it's the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars owner. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a host of other ones that, you know, you could you could look at and and like, I mean, when we had the national anthem protest, Jerry Jones referred to his his players as boys, and we all know how that statement is taken in in whenever it comes to uh, race relations, um, and it's I guarantee you that you will find so much more, you know, bias and you know, racist comments and sexist comments if, if you really did the digging that you really wanted to. Um, and, yeah, it, Gr Gruden is definitely, Charles, thank you for checking it out. Gruden is, it, it isn't the only one. It's, it's a whole lot more. And, you know, it's just these these guys are, 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 leaders of men in a predominantly black sport. And, you know, that's why, you know, the, the, the things have been brought up about, you know, you know, having more blacks in, in higher roles and positions because this is the fallout from it. Because, you know, you say and do things like this right here, and it's just repeated because if Grudem's was the ones that were found, they said they found some more, you know, well, how did the people respond back to those emails? You had to get a response. I, I know you got a response. If somebody sent me an email right now, I'll respond to it. Whether I'm saying I'm not interested or, you know, I'm interested or, you know, whatever. You know, you're going to respond to the email. And so all of these people definitely need to be held accountable for what they did, what they said, and what they allowed to happen. Because... um if if any of you had any decency and somebody emailed me about uh, a particular person that I deal with on an everyday basis because you know uh, D Smith is somebody they dealt with all the time and he made comments like that you deal with the officials all the time and until we change that good old boy mentality nothing is going to change about the NFL like you know they got in racism at the end of each end zone, but it's it's hard to end racism whenever you know it's 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 right there in, in your own backyard. Um, I don't think John Gruden is the only one. I know it's, it's some more coaches that feel the same way he feel. I know it's some GMs that feel the same way he feel. I know it's some owners that feel the same way he feel. You know, and, and, and at the end of the day, they're entitled to their own opinion. They, they can feel how they want to feel. But once you start expressing that stuff in public, that's when the problem comes in. And unfortunately, this is public now. And But the, the sad thing about this is everybody said John Gruden's uh, career is over. I disagree. <laughs> because if you notice... He hasn't made any comments. He hasn't said anything. He's just going to sit back and let the, the chips fall where they may. And after a while, it won't be no issues or nothing. He'll get a job with some show where he's talking quarterbacks and he's just this quarterback guru and they'll forget about everything. Of course, the last time we talked about it, nothing changed. And that's it. Exactly, Gary, if, if, if nothing changes, <laughs> nothing changes. You know, so it's the same NFL. Like, you know, and it's sad that 
in 2021 that we still talking about race and you know and you know and the comment that he made about D. Smith was kind of you know was very insulting. He said something about he had the same the, the lips the size of a Michelin tires, and you know Molly Carroll Rose said something very important. A lot of people don't want to see, but you know it's a lot of people want to get lip surgeries to get lips as full as ours. I mean, it's as simple as that, you know, trying to get full of noses and, you know, all types of stuff. So, like, and then it's a lot of people that go and tan to try to get dark. So we have to be careful, you know, the things that we say and then, you know, and then look at reality. And so Gruden fallout, I think it's going to be some more dominoes to fall here in the upcoming weeks. So we're going to get to our quick talks and we are going to go through this real quick and fast and all of that good stuff. So I got to pull up something real quick because I have um, a couple. We have the, uh, we got the baseball playoffs, uh, the NLCS, um, the Dodgers and the Braves going against each other. The Braves going to have two walk offs. They are up. Two to nothing. I don't want to jinx them, so I'm not going to talk about that that much. <laughs> and so, um, you know, the other series, we got the Astros and the Red Sox. The series is tied 1-1, and the game is actually going on right now. It's the bottom of the second. The Red Sox are leading the Astros 6 to nothing with two outs in the bottom of the second. Um, like I said, this is like a um, – yeah, of course, I agree with you. Keep the light shining on the situation. Um, but, you know, baseball, like, this is this is the best time for me to watch baseball because you get your best pitching, your best hitters, and all that good stuff. And then, like, it's just it's just a joy to watch. I, You know, I, when I grew up, we played baseball. So baseball is exciting to me. You just can't watch, you know, certain people. You got to watch everything. You got to watch the bat catcher and all of that good stuff. Watch how he gets signals, you know, Everything, who still bases, all that stuff. It's a whole lot of drama that leads up to that. So we got those two series and stuff going on right now. And so we'll see, you know, what happens with that. You know, baseball plays a lot of games. Uh, I just hope the Braves keep doing what they're doing and and make it to the World Series. All right, next thing is Ben Simmons. He, um, he goes back to practice for the first time. I'm not sure if he's going to play or not, but – uh, his his fines have reached up over a million dollars, so that probably changed his mind about you know doing things and, and and going to work. And so you know, with that being said, he showed up. Um, um, what did you say? Um, Perry plays for Boston, and he said as long as he had the sense of uniform, he no problem. <laughs> yeah, so like um. Ben Simmons went to practice. We're going to see what's going to happen. A lot of people are saying, how can you mend that relationship easy? Winning cures all things. And, you know, I just think Ben Simmons needs to go out there and play basketball because the more that he pouts and the more that he, you know, acts like he doesn't want to be there, I think his trade value goes down. And, like, the 76ers don't have to trade him. And um, it's, it's just that simple. Just go to work. Just because you didn't do what you were supposed to do, you go out and work, get your game right. It's not the 76ers responsibility to make sure that your game is 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 up to par. And it's it's that simple. Like I, I just don't get it with him. Yeah, he, he he don't look happy back in Philly, but he better get happy because if you're trying to force your way out, that's a whole nother story for another day. And you know, I, I I've said it repeatedly, the next the next trade, um, the next collective bargaining agreement is going to be hell for the players. Simple as that. <laughs> All right, Jacksonville, Jacksonville Jaguars finally win. They win in London. Um, they beat the Miami Dolphins. That stops their 20-game winning streak. They hadn't won a game since the week one of last season. Um, <laughs> that, and that's all I'm going to say about that. All right, then we got college basketball coming up. The, the Zags are AP number one. Uh, it's interesting to see what's going to happen in college basketball with, you know, coaches retiring and, you know, all this pay to play and this, that, and the third. Um, yes, Corey, exactly. Just be a professional. That's all you got to do. Be a professional. 
And um, it's just interesting to see. I, I'm, I'm not real big on AP, uh, the preseason, you know, polls and everything, because anything can happen because you start playing these preseason tournaments, um, you know, and all that good stuff. And then, you know, teams end up losing. Um, so we'll see what happened with the Zags. They, 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 they've been pretty strong here these last couple of years. I'm excited about college basketball, um, this college basketball stuff. They'll just say Memphis is going to be tough. I, I, I agree. It's going to be a lot of tough teams, and it's, it's going to be, you know, going around the board. All right. And so next topic is uh, Cam Newton. Um, Cam Newton got vaccinated and wants to play. This says a lot. Um uh, no, Charles, say, yeah, I'm a UNC fan with the new coach Davis. I think Carolina is going to be a pretty decent squad with Hubert Davis. I, I really think he is. I think I, I, I think he is. Honestly, I think he is. All right, but Cam Newton got vaccinated and said he wants to play. And I think this right here might be a setup for him to end up in Washington and play with the football team simply because um, they need a quarterback. Him and Ron Rivera are real – you know, they, they had a good career together in Carolina. Um, and Ron Rivera was um, is immune uh, deficient, so uh, he, he wasn't real happy about guys um, not being vaccinated because, you know, you know, his immune system is not like everybody else. Um, <laughs> Chris says, stay home, Cam, just retire. <laughs> Because I think it's just, I think it's the situation if he goes. I think if he went to a better situation, like I don't think New England was a spot for him. Like it's it's New England didn't their offense wasn't predicated around a quarterback like a Cam Newton. It it just wasn't. So I think he knows Ron Rivera, Ron Rivera's offense, and this, that, and the third. That's more predicated for him. We'll see. Um, I don't think he's ready to retire, uh, but. I do think right now, if anything happens, like he will have to go somewhere where, you know, they're not very good. They need quarterback play or he has to go somewhere where he can be a backup. Simple as that. And I didn't know this right here. You say he's been talking to Seattle, but I don't know if Seattle is the place for him to. <laughs> Chris said Carolina cut him for a reason. Yeah, I I, I, I agree with you on that because yeah, his, one, his health wasn't good. Um and TC said, why could it start us out there? Let's turn. Yeah, but the thing about it is, this is TC, you, I agree with you, but who wants a guy like Cam Newton that wants to do things his way or no way? And he doesn't, um, he, he, he's just not that kind of player anymore. Uh, Dwight gave her and said, if Cam had not won the MVP award, he'd probably still be playing at a high level. To me, the MVP season. Went to his head, and 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 I kind of agree with you, Uncle Dwight. That that's that's the that's the thing that I I was kind of talking about the the, the players, you know, playing for money and stuff like that. Whenever they get paid, they kind of be like, oh, forget it. And that I think that kind of can happen with Cam. And you said TC said a healthy Cam is still tough. Yes, I agree with you on that, but in what situation would he be tough? He he, he you know. New England is not the, the spot for him. He can't go to the Buffalo Bills. He can't go to the Seattle Seahawks. He can't go to um, the Rams. He can't go to the Colts. He can't go to um, the Chargers. Uh, Pittsburgh might be a place that might be good for him or something like that. Um, but other than that, I mean, where is he going to go? Like, you know, maybe New York. Maybe send him to the Giants because Daniel Jones is, is is not the guy for them. You know, uh, Carolina might be kicking himself because Sam Donald is not playing the way he normally playing. And maybe he can go to Detroit. Detroit ain't playing real good. Maybe he can spark some life into them. Uh, and any West Coast offense, you know, TC, uh, you know, I agree with you with a West Coast offense, but everybody who run the West Coast offense got good quarterbacks. Simple. You said, um, oh, you said, what about home in Atlanta? Corey, Atlanta might be a good spot, but see, you know, Atlanta already done wasted years with Matt Ryan. 
So why get a Cam Newton and then boom, you know, you right back in the same situation. You wasted time on an old savvy veteran. I, I mean, I, I want Cam to play. Don't get me wrong about this. I would love to see Cam Newton play, but Cam got to change up some stuff. First, he got he got vaccinated. So that's a plus. And then Cam gonna have to humble himself. He has to humble himself and play within the limits of the team that he's with. And Chris, you said New York. <laughs> you said you, you'll keep Jones. <laughs> well, y'all, y'all, y'all and cast the Cam out of this joint, man. Dang, gone. Cam cannot win if I'm losing with you guys, man. So, you know, um, yeah, I I I I, I don't know. I, I just think that right now with him doing this, I think this has been a wake up call for him. So I mean all we can do is wait and see. I think somebody may pick him up because, um, it's, it, it, you know, it, it's some people that may need a quarterback and all that good stuff. And I think the Washington football team is probably the best place for him to go. And so we're going to stay in football and we're going to move to um, – we're going to move to – let me take this off. We're going to move to the NFL in week seven. And week seven – yeah, Hargro, I'm telling you, the, the the football team needs them. They need them. They need them bad. I'll take Cam Newton over that mess I got nine over there. So, but we're going to move on to week seven in the NFL. And we got a host of games. You got the Broncos and the Browns that, that play um, this Thursday. And the Browns are banged up real bad. I, I'm not sure if they're going to make it out of that game from when they're running backs, Chubb and stuff, them hurting. And, uh, Baker Mayfield and having a separated shoulder and all that stuff. But, you know, we got some good games that's going to come on. You know, you got the Packers against uh, the football team. The Chiefs uh, travel to the Titans. Um, the Falcons go to the Dolphins. The Jets at the Patriots. The Panthers at the 1-5 and five Giants. The Bengals and the Ravens, I think, is going to be a really, really, really good, t- uh, good game. Uh, Rip, Bengals and Ravens. I'm right there. Hold on. What you say? Dwight, Dwight said, "Would you take Cam for your team?" I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not a fan of my quarterback, Jalen Hurts. So I, I, I might take a look at him just to see, because you know, I, I, I just don't know. I'm not a fan of Jalen Hurts. So like, you know, I might, I might. I'll be honest with you. I might. But from what Chris said, Chris said he'll keep Daniel Jones. Then I might need to keep Jalen Hurts. But and then we got uh, the Eagles at the Raiders. And uh, uh, TC, I just hate to tell you this, we're we going to go to Vegas and we're going to whoop y'all behind. Then we got the Lions and the Rams. And then um, then I, the other games are the Texans at the Cardinals. The Cardinals is playing real good football right now. I, I think it's going to be hard to beat them. The Bears at the Bucks. a lot of people sleep on the Bears, but that's a game you got to watch out for because – you know, that defense is not bad. And so you see what there. And then you got the Colts and the 49ers. I think the Colts is about to hit a stride that, you know, they they getting healthy, you know, and all that good stuff. And then on Monday night, you got the Saints and the Seahawks. And I think the, the Saints will end up beating the Seahawks because the Seahawks are just not healthy. Uh, Russell Wilson's out, and I, I think that they need quarterback play. Um, <laughs> what TC say? <laughs> You can't be making jokes. <laughs> yeah, hey, the cards are for real, Charles. They are like they 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 good on both sides of football. Uh, they 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 good on both sides of football. Uncle Dwight said, "I'm not a fan of my team quarterback, but we don't need Cam." <laughs> well, hey, we're gonna see. I think Cam will get a job at some point in time. Somebody gonna pick him up. All right, so we're gonna get into a conversation that everybody's been talking about. You know. Is Kyrie Irving selfish? And there's two answers to that question. It's yes and it's no. And when I say no, I mean he has done tremendous things off the court, giving back money, you know, donating things, just doing all types of things. And a lot of people have tried to make this situation to be a Colin Kaepernick NFL type of deal. And that's the farthest from the case because Colin Kaepernick was a victim and he was 
sought out to, you know, and blackball. Kyrie Irving is that's this is not that situation. And I say he's selfish because because of this this situation right here, because he's holding the Brooklyn Nets and the NBA hostage basically because of a law made by the government in New York. And the same law was made in California. And my thing is this right here. You can say what you want to say about vaccinations and, you know, the COVID, you know, deal and all that good stuff. It's just, it just baffles me that a lot of people would stand up for Kyrie whenever he was the one that didn't want the players to play whenever they was going into the bubble because of COVID. He felt like that was going to be an issue. And now he's coming out saying that he felt like he would, he thought that he would be able to play unvaccinated because of some type of health issue or something like that. And if that's the case, then he should still be able to play because there's other players like Bradley Beal that, you know, is able to play. And a lot of people trying to compare that to Kyrie and that's two totally different things. But um, the thing about it is it can't be true for him to say that he felt like he was going to be able to play being unvaccinated because of X, Y, and Z. And because if that was the case, then I think the NBA would have spoke up by now. The Brooklyn Nets would have spoke up by now. And Kyrie's whole ordeal, like they had him today, TMZ spotted him playing football. And like my thing is, the guy just doesn't want to play basketball. Not right now anyway. I just feel like he wants to take his time. Whenever he decides he want to play, he wants to play. But he still want to get paid. And, you know, I had, you know, a friend of mine that made some comments to me basically saying that I'm old school and basically saying I need to get with the times because um, because basically it's it's a new era and people can wear two different hats at the same time. And I said to him, like, yeah, you made my point. You could be an activist and still play basketball. And his response is he don't want to do both of them at the same time. Well, you can't have it both ways. And the guy said, I'm old school. I'm not going to say his name because, you know, um, he acts like I'm that much older than him. I'm six years older than he is. I might be a little bit more seasoned. I think things out a whole lot more better. I might be a whole lot more mature. But at the end of the day, just because I don't agree with Kyrie's sentiment, that doesn't mean that I'm old school. I've heard some people call people coons because they're not on Kyrie's side. Um, it's, it's, it's ridiculous what's going on with this. Kyrie wants this attention, and y'all are giving them the attention because he got these followers that's making it seem like he's doing the right thing, and he's not. The NBA is not blackballing him. The NBA didn't say that he they they making guys get, you know, vaccinated. But the NBA is going to follow the rules and regulations of whatever cities and state they're making money in. And if Kyrie don't want to get with that, then Kyrie's being selfish. In this instance, you know, you know, a lot of people saying, well, he's not seven. No. And I said this and I made this comment right here. I don't think. No, LJ, we got to stop with that, man. You can't say that somebody's a coon because they don't always agree with the sentiment that we are in. Like, I done seen Stephen A. speak up for the black community. But if the black community is wrong, I done seen him, you know, not defend us, too. And I'm the same way. So, if you know, it's a lot of us. We got to stop that. And, Chris, you're right. The inmates run this out. And me and Brian Carthens and TC and all of us, we in a group chat. Brian said, this, this, this right here doesn't sound so bad after all because it's the truth. 
when you allow that to happen, it you see what's what is turned out to be. And I made this comment, and I'm gonna get off Kyrie because it's 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 enough that's going on to be worried about him. I don't think that I'm a selfish guy. I think I give back. I think if you hit me up and say, hey, I ain't got no clothes, or I see you, I'll take my shoes off my feet, I'll get the clothes off my back. But have I made selfish decisions? Yes, I have. And I admit it. So you can be unselfish but still have some selfish decisions that you make. Just because you're unselfish in certain other things doesn't mean that you're not selfish in the situation that you're in right now. And I feel like that Kyrie's being selfish in this situation because he's holding the Brooklyn Nets and the NBA basically hostage because of a law that he has with government. He's saying that, oh, he's trying to be a voice for the voiceless. And this is what Kyrie failed to realize. He's trying to make a point, and a lot of people saying, oh, he's willing to, to give up his money. What y'all fail to realize is Kyrie not going to get the money for home games. But he's going to get the other half of his money, other games and stuff they play. Those people who have to get vaccinated, keep their job, they're not up on the contract to get no money, even if they decide to quit. And so that, that's just being hypocritical in, in, in my personal opinion whenever it comes to this because he's saying one thing, but the whole scenario is something totally different. The NBA is not blackballing. Kyrie Irving is not getting blackballed. He's not a victim. So I wish people would stop that. And, Charles, you say eventually, you know, he's going to get blackballed. I don't think that he's going to get blackballed. I just feel like some people just not going to want to deal with him. And that's, 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 that's a difference. Where, you know, I don't want to sign you because I'm not sure if you're going to come to work. The way the NFL blackballed Colin Kaepernick was. Now, we're not signing him because of uh, a protest, something totally different. I just feel like they're not going to want to deal with him because of the exits and stuff that he does and the self-inflictions that he does to teams and himself. And the crazy thing about it is, and some of y'all might get upset when I say Kyrie not even the best player on the Brooklyn Nets. He's the third best player. The third best player. And you're acting like you're just that guy. Yeah. Yeah, TC, he wants everything. Just, just yeah, he wants everything his way. And, and that's what it is. And so, like, the guy is, is – it, 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 some the guy said – he is, he said that he is different. Yes, he is, he is very different. He's very different. But just because you're different doesn't make you right. And Chris, I agree with you. Every season is something with Kyrie. Every season is it's something with him. In this situation right here, he's not a victim. He he has every right not to get vaccinated. But at the same time, oh now, LJ, you didn't hear what I said last week? I, I respect LeBron a whole lot more for dealing with this guy because, like, that, that is a handful. And you know me. I said I, LeBron, like, for him winning that championship with Kyrie, that, that says a lot to have to deal with this, deal with ignorance like this all the time. So, you know, and it's enough for Kyrie. And a lot of people are going to say that, you know, people are coons or people – um are wrong for not supporting them. Now, I can't support this ignorance. I can't support it. Um, of course, that my wife said, what it boils down to is he wants to play on his terms and eventually could possibly blackball because no one wants to deal with that type of attitude. And my thing with that is, Corey, I don't think you can consider it being blackballed after you put yourself in that situation. You know, like he's doing this to himself. Blackball to me is what the NFL did to Colin Kaepernick. We all going to come together. This dude ain't about to mess up our money because he wants to protest this, right? He can do this some, someplace else. And so, like, I think that's the difference. Like, he going to do this to himself. Like, no, because 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 um, um, because 
the, the Brooklyn Nets already said they're not offering him an extension. So who else going to pick him up and offer him an extension? So he he's doing it to himself. That That's the way I look at it. And I, Jenny, you said what do you mean by coon? Coon is 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 is, is the reference to um, a black person who basically agrees with the white man, or you know, or something like that. That that's 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 the only thing I can think of as a coon being. But that's enough of Kyrie because I think he's selfish in this situation right here. I think he's been selfish in a lot of other situations, like last season, whenever he decided to to take off. And TC, when you say Uncle Tom. When you say Uncle Tom, if you look up the definition of Uncle Tom, you'll stop calling people Uncle Tom because Uncle Tom was the one who helped the blacks get away from white. So he 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 wasn't the one that everybody made him out to be. So look up the definition of Uncle Tom, and I guarantee you'll change that. You'll change that. Look up the definition of Uncle Tom. All right, so we're gonna move on, and the NBA is back. Like it, it, it's it's gonna be great to watch because I feel like. Now the NBA is 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 making some rule changes that will benefit um, will benefit um, different uh, styles of play. Now it won't just be a you know people are better play a little bit of defense. Uh, real quick before I move on, somebody I just found out about all the time. Yeah, like. Right. School yourself on Uncle Tom, and I guarantee you, you'd be like, nah, he ain't no Uncle Tom. <laughs> TC said, yeah, you didn't know that. Learn something new every day. That's what I'm saying. Like, that, that I used to call people Uncle Toms. I stopped that a long time ago. But, yeah, so NBA is back, and we got two games to start the opening night on tomorrow night. We got the Brooklyn Nets visiting the Milwaukee Bucks, and then we got the Warriors visiting the Los Angeles Lakers. Um, this is, this is going to be not a basketball. The Bucks are going to have their ring ceremony and and uh and banners drop, and the Nets are going to be held without Kyrie Irving. And I honestly believe the Nets will take this game and spoil their they party for you know ring night. The Warriors and the Lakers open up after that. Um, on paper, I think the Lakers will beat uh the Warriors, but. With the way Steph has been playing and all that good stuff, um, um, I'm not sure. I, I'm just not – people may think I'm hating on the Lakers. I, I, I've said this before. The Lakers are older. And LeBron is, is not the LeBron that he was five, six, seven years ago. Is he playing tremendous basketball? Yes, he is. But – the thing about the Lakers is this right here. We don't know how Anthony Davis is going to be. Um, we don't know how Anthony Davis is going to be healthy. Um, and then the thing that makes LeBron James more efficient and a better player is whenever he has shooting. And um, I don't see where the shooting – like and a lot of people try to say, oh, he got some shooting. No, I'm talking about pure shooters. Um, like, you know, the Kyle Corvers and all that good stuff. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see because, you know, it's a lot of guys that, um, uh, that, that, that need that basketball that's on the Lakers, you know, LeBron, Russ, Carmelo Anthony and Carmelo in the game, people are already picking on him and picking rolls and stuff. They say that he can't guard nobody. And I, and, and I think that's going to be an issue with them. Um, you know, so we'll see uh, what happens. Uh, Uncle Dwight, I, I mean, I, I feel like I don't think they're going to shock people, but I don't think people fear the Warriors like they used to. After KD left, I don't think nobody fear them. Um, uh, Chris said he's still pulling for his Rockets. Now, the Rockets, um, they tried to make some moves. I, this is how I feel about the Rockets, Chris. They got a, um, a good coach good black coach and you know then they they break up the team and so now he has to deal with you know the bs and probably won't fulfill his full contract and it's not his fault that you know you trade james harden you trade everybody and he don't have nothing so you know we'll see and the bulls 
the Bulls are, I ain't gonna say they're some sleepers because everybody has recognized what they what they have done. The Bulls, I ain't gonna say those sleepers because when people see what you the moves you have made and the players that you have similar to team you have some, you're not sleepers. Um, you know, I feel like they would be sleepers if you know they didn't have the roster moves and stuff like that, and all of a sudden they snuck up on somebody. But I think the Bulls are gonna be good. TC said everybody plays that style. Now talking about the Warriors, yeah, I agree. Everybody plays that style. Except for the Lakers, because they, they can't play, they ain't got no shooters. And I just say Shay Gill just Alexander. And so, you know, the NBA is back. We'll talk about that because we're gonna have a host of games over the next couple of days. Um, and so, like, you know, you got those two games on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, you got a host of games. You got the Pacers at the Hornets, the Bulls at the Pistons, the Celtics at the Knicks, the Wizards at the Raptors, the Cavs at the Grizzlies, the Rockets at the Timberwolves, 76ers at the Pelicans, Magic at the Spurs, the Jazz host the Thunder, and the Nuggets and the Suns and the Kings and the Blazers. I think that Nuggets-Suns game is going to be a good game tomorrow night on ESPN. Not tomorrow night, Wednesday night. On ESPN. So we'll see how the NBA season goes. Um, I think it's going to be a great season simply because we guys can play a little bit of defense. Um, Chris, you say you pull it for Clay. Uh, I think Clay is the best shooter in the NBA. Um, <laughs> but they have LeBron. <laughs> yeah, I, I ain't going to get all LeBron, TC. You know, you know how I feel about that. But, yep, you know, that's going to be the show for today. And um, I just want to say, you know, everybody, I appreciate you guys getting on. I, I don't have any, like, motivational words for today. You know, everybody, it's Monday. You know, make the best of your week. Um, you know, everybody dread Mondays, but I love any day that I get up and I'm able to open up my eyes and do things that I like to do. And one thing I like to do is talk and watch sports, so. This is one thing. So, hey, you guys, make sure that y'all have – appreciate it, Chris. Appreciate it, Corey. You guys, make sure that y'all have the best weekend, best week possible. And, you know, don't let anything pull you down. You know, anything that happens bad could be just for a short period of time. It don't mess up your whole day. Um and everybody stay safe um take care of yourselves um um and chris i really appreciate it that's one thing you do tell me you try not to miss no monday i, I really appreciate it it means a lot appreciate you came appreciate you up with dwight and so i leave you guys with my outro See you guys next Monday, 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern.